So good morning once again, everyone. Thanks so much for being here this morning. Today, the topic is um, options 101, you know, on the on the different perspectives of, um, you know, myself and and Rick and John. Um, everyone has a, a different way to look at things, um, I think, when it comes to options, but I look at my options trading a little bit different than a lot of people do. And, and a lot of this, um, <laughs> thanks Malcolm. Um, I trade options with um, an idea of something I learned from a guy by the name of Ron Ionary. Um, options, are a replacement to a stock trade and nothing more. A lot of people today who trade options, they think of the option first. And let me see if this makes any sense to you, but it made a lot of sense to me. We have to remember that options are a derivative of the stock. We choose options on a stock that we would normally be willing to trade, meaning the stock has to be in a good quality pattern, a good setup that we trade, and we choose to trade an option because of cash efficiency and leverage and those kind of things in the trade. We should never be looking at options as the only, only way to trade. It is an exception. It's, a, it's an opportunity for cash efficiency, but there's also times when you look at uh, um, at options that um, that's not the best deal not even close to the best deal and that they should be absolutely avoided at times because of the cost the slippage and everything else in those options so if you go from that standpoint that we would be willing to trade the stock in the stock pattern as it stands but we're making a choice to go to the option. That's a, that's a big change in perspective, if you ask me, rather than what options have really become today, and that is just a source of non-stop gambling. Okay, We've turned the options market into a casino. And unfortunately, well, the stats are out there. Most people who trade options lose money. It's just a it's just a fact they lose money it it's oftentimes not the best deal in the market and we have to recognize that if we choose to go down that path of trading options now for the time I have today I can't get into tons and tons of detail but I want to get into some of the most important um, aspects of options that I think everybody should know. Um, first off, I think it really is important that everyone understand how to read a an options chart. If I were going to buy the diamonds and I'm going to buy something up in here and I'll explain why. Ooh, boy, I don't like the open interest. So yeah, wouldn't want to trade these at all. But let's say the open interest was great and I wanted to buy something up in here. Um, the only reason I'm doing this is to show you a P&L graph. I think everyone needs to understand how to read a P&L graph um, in the market. And so we're going to um, analyze what this looks like. And we have to realize that um, there's a lot of different ways that you can trade options to build this same kind of pattern. Um, in the market with combinations of options. Um, options have that ability to provide you with flexibility to build all kinds of P&L formations in the market. And one of the first things that used to confuse the heck out of me for a long, long time was uh, everyone sees this line right here, this white line that's across here. It, when you look at PL 
um, charts, that stands for break even. Um, so to break even on the trade, we have to trade above that area. Okay, what does break even mean? Well, on a PL graph, what it means is whatever you spent on the trade, $16.50 on the trade, to break even in the PL graph, you need to come above $16.50 in profit per share. Okay, so that needs to cross out and cover the entire cost of the trade for the break even point. But we all know that doesn't mean that you can't profit. You don't have to ever come to break even to make a profit on that trade. All we need is that trade to move up along that scale um, in the trade. The other thing that we need to understand is that every time we buy an option, we have a decay risk, a theta risk. Um, theta is our time decay and theta is always working against us as a buyer. It doesn't matter how great a trader you are. It doesn't matter how accurate a trader you are. Theta is always working against you and will cost you profit on any long trade. Okay. There's something that people get really confused about these days uh, because they um, we've gotten into such the, this gambling mode. If you buy an equal amount of stock to an option, okay, and we know options are standardized into 100 share positions, okay, the stock will always make more money than the options. Okay? Always make more money than the options. And every single point in time, it will always make more money than the options. Okay? Because options deduct the spread okay we have the spread between the bid and ask that we have to make up on the buy point so we lose money when we buy it and we lose money when we sell it okay so we have to make up the um, a spread loss in there and we have a theta loss. We don't have those kind of problems in a stock trade. Okay. So these are always working against us in an option trade and we need to understand that. So if we have a trade, this purple line that's on the P&L graph is showing us what the value of the stock, that little gold hash mark that you see right there, that gold hash mark is the current price of the stock. Okay. The red line is the break even point or the profit point. That's making up the spread for today. That's the where we become profitable today. This line here is where we become profitable at expiration. So the difference between these two, between today, which we can see here, you might not be able to read that very well, but that's um, $390.81. At expiration, it's $396.55. That's how much we could lose in theta decay. Okay. Now, 
it's really, really important to understand no matter what you pay for the option, from the second you own an option, whatever you pay in extrinsic value, extrinsic value is essentially your theta or your time value of the option. Whatever you pay, let me go back over here. If I change this column right here to extrinsic value, we know from the second we buy this, this price right here, $5 and 34 and a half cents, will be at zero in 57 days. Okay, We can't make that up, we can't fix that. From the moment we buy that, $5.34 and a cents is going slowly toward zero in 57 days. So whatever price move that we get in this move, in this trade, and depending on the time that we hold, we've got to make up this theta decay, which right now is eight cents a day on average. Now you can call, and I've done this before, I've called think or swim back before they were owned by Schwab and I said okay can you guys explain to me when does the theta decay come out of the price of the option and they say yes it comes out of the price of the option and I said no when does it come out and they say yes it comes out of the price of the option <laughs> because it's really an unanswerable question it's slowly throughout the day you're losing money theoretically at about eight cents a day on this option and you have to understand that. Stock does not have that. Stock does not have a theta decay. No matter what happens with stock, 57 days from now, if diamonds doesn't move, this loses everything. It's worthless. There's nothing left. Because remember, what I'm doing is I'm buying a contract that gives me the right to buy the diamonds if the contract terms are fulfilled. Every day that passes, there's less of a chance that those contract terms will be fulfilled or, or fall out of fulfillment. Less of a chance and that theta decays away. So it, it, we all know we can hold an option and everything that we get in that trade can go to zero. Everything, not just the theta, but the entire position can be zero and lose it all. But even if the diamonds, if I bought the diamonds here and it fell below $380 a share, dropped $10 a share, if I buy the stock, I still have an asset that I can sell. Okay, I could sell, I lost money on it. If I sell it at, at, at $380 or below that, I've lost $10, $12, $15 a share, but I still have something that I can sell. If this is below 380, this is completely worthless. There's nothing left. The entire investment is gone. Okay, so those are important things to know first off about options, that there's more danger there. The, the old term is in options, not only do you have to be right on direction, you have to be right on the timing. So say for example, 57 days from now, this hasn't, this hasn't held up, but 58 days, this has a big upside move. You don't get to participate in that. You lose money. The next day it would have made money. Doesn't matter. The contract is over. Okay. So realizing that in options, we have to understand that there's more risk when it comes to options. And um, that risk in options is what people often forget. They, they have kind of um, gone into this, oh, that's the only thing to trade is options. And, and they've gotten into that mode because it's cheaper to trade options and I can make more money. And, and that's false. They're not cheaper to trade. 
they may cheap be cheaper on a per share value because you're buying a contract on an asset. They're cheaper to buy because of the leverage, but you spend more in spread and you lose in theta. They're not cheaper to buy. Requires less capital, but they're not cheaper on a cost basis. Does that make sense, guys? So you always want to remember that about stocks. They're dangerous. They're more dangerous than trading stocks. And that's consequently why most people who trade options lose money. So there's some rules to follow here. And Ron Ionary um, finally cleared this up for me um, in options, that if you're going to do a stock replacement and you're doing the work of technical analysis, what we do as traders here in, in Hit and Run Candlesticks, Right Way Options, uh, BYLB, is we're technical traders. We're looking at the charts and we're trying to gain some information about how the, tr the chart is trading as to whether this is bullish or bearish or, or, or sideways and how we can time ourselves to the market, time ourselves in the trade. So remember in options, well, in a stock trade, all we need is to have the direction right because there's no decay rate when I buy the stock. No decay rate. I don't have to have the timing exactly right. In options, the timing is extremely important. If I don't have the time right, we've all seen this before, right? Where you pick a trade, it looks like it's going to go. And then it just doesn't go anywhere for a couple of weeks and you're losing money, losing money, losing money on the trade because your timing was off. It overall went to the upside, but we didn't have enough time in the trade or enough uh, patience or weren't willing to, to suffer the theta decay, decay loss over that period of time. We end up taking a loss even though the trade eventually goes in the direction that we thought it was going to go. So we have to have the direction right and we have to have the timing right. As we know, one of the hardest things to do in the market is time the market. That we get it exactly right on the timing. Okay. So Ron Ionary explained it this way, and it made a whole lot of sense to me, that if I was going to go into options trading, and he wasn't just talking to me, it was a group of people, that I need to take my technical analysis, and I need to get paid for my technical analysis. Okay, So I do my chart work, and I believe that this chart is going to move up or down and I need to be thinking about how much time I think that is going to take for that expected move to occur okay if we were to see a nice bullish pattern in a chart and we see a big resistance up here and we think about how long is it going to take us maybe to get up here for the trade so we need to think about how much time is that going to take before the theta starts getting into my back pocket. We know that theta, if we look at a theta decay chart, I'm going kind of fast here. Is anybody not keeping up on, I know this is kind of basic for most people, but um, we are talking about 101 here, options, and, and I don't want to be leaving somebody behind if, if I'm going too fast. If we look at a theta decay chart, theta decay is kind of like this, and it goes parabolic. In the last 30 days of an option has the fastest theta decay. It accelerates, it goes parabolic to the downside. Okay. So the way Ron Ionary explained it is if you want the best opportunity for a trade, make sure you're trading options that have plenty of time for your expected move. Now I'm talking about 
most swing trading here. Um, intraday trading, you're going to go with different time frames because you're, you know, intraday trading, you're looking at being out at the end of the day. You can deal with something different. But what we want to do is make sure that the expected move that we think is going to occur occurs in this period of time. Okay, that we get our expected move in the trade here before the theta starts growing and working harder against us in the trade. Okay, so when you plan a trade, you need to plan a trade with enough time. And the rule that I follow on any timing for a directional trade, whether it be a long call position or a long put position, is I'm looking for 60 days plus. Now, that doesn't mean I can't look at an option like we have right now, 57 days to expiration for next month, that I couldn't trade that. No, I probably could trade that. This is a generalized rule. I want 60 days or even more time, depending on what the, the setup is, to be able to participate in that trade without much theta decay problem initially in the position, and then I could cut loose before that theta really starts to pull that trade apart, making it harder. Because here's the honest truth. If I would have bought a similar size position in stock, this trade here is really going to be getting into the, and getting into the profit and really hurting. If I had bought the stock, I don't have to worry about that. Okay, so I've got to get my timing right on these trades. And when I say plus, sometimes you look at an option and you know the only thing you can do is go out. Instead of going to August, you got to go all the way to September to find the next option. Don't be afraid to buy enough time. Trade, because remember, time is on that sliding scale. It's coming down. But even if the trade doesn't work in your favor, as long as you've got enough time left on the option, you sell that time back to the option. You can capture to the market. You can capture back a bunch of that time when you sell it off. Okay, so you capture back. People will argue, yeah, but Doug, I don't want to pay $9 for the trade. If I buy this option here, I only have to pay $3 for the trade. And well, yeah, 90 days might be great, but you know, this has 25 days on it and that should be enough time. But if it's not, you're losing so much in theta decay over that period of that short period of time. Even if the stock does finally move in your direction, it may not be enough to overcome the theta decay. And then you have none of that time to sell back. There's no time left on the option. Nobody wants the option. There's not much time left. So you have very little time to sell back. If you can be in that 60 to 90 days to expiration, your expected move occurs. You've taken less theta decay. Yes, it cost you more to take the trade, but you've taken less theta decay on that position. You actually made more money in the trade because you're not taking so much theta in that position. Does that make sense, guys? Why I, why I use that little bit longer, longer term option rule? And that finally clicked with me when Ron Ionair was talking about it. Now, wait a minute. I'm actually hurting myself by going too short in time on the trade. I'm creating losses for myself because I'm too overly confident in my technical analysis that I can time this perfectly. How many in here could say right now, show of hands, how many of it in here could say, you've always got the timing right? Timing is just dead on, you never miss. Right, that's a problem for all of us, right? Market throws us surprises and curveballs all the time. 
Give yourself time to be right. Have extra time. Because remember, even though you're paying more, you can sell that time back if your expected move occurs. Okay? So give yourself time. If we take a look at the other details of options, they are equally important in here. And Ron made this very, very clear. I'm just going to use the diamonds if you guys don't mind, or if I could spell it right. Um, made this very, very clear. If you're going to trade an option, get paid for the work that you're doing. Okay. And what he meant by that, by the way, Ron Ionari was a guy who ran Options University. Anybody remember that? Options University was really big years and years ago um, in teaching people options. I took the mastery course. Um, it cost about 20 grand. But, um, and it took about a year <laughs> uh, for the course but to really learn options. And um, he's passed away now, the company. I, th I don't know if the company's still there or not. If it is, it's a shell of itself. It's not doing much of what it used to do. But um, if, if you wanna be paid for your technical analysis, the work we do, right? What we do as traders is we work really hard to read charts. We spend a lot of time with charts. In fact, how many of you would say the majority of your day is spent studying price action of charts? And if that's the case, then we need to get paid for that time. And he said, this is the second mistake most option traders make. And by the way, Ron Ionary traded the floor. He, he was paid by companies to, um, well, not really paid by companies. He was paid by working in the option pit trading for companies okay he had more knowledge of options than i'll ever have but he said one of the second things people make major mistakes on in trading options is they they go so cheap on the option they don't get paid for all of their work so let's talk about that for a second. If we're looking at these August contracts and we're looking in here, um, I want to be in a position somewhere between 70 and 80 deltas. This is the sweet spot for options, somewhere between here. Because remember, if I trade this, Delta tells us not only how much we're going to make based on a $1 move of the stock, but it tells us the percent chance of that option still being in the money at expiration. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, first off, it's the, how much money we're going to make. If I buy this option, it tells me that for a $1 move up, in this trade, I should make a dollar. Okay, so I'm going to make 70% or 71% in this example right now. 71 cents for every one dollar this stock moves to the upside. Okay, now I have the same risk. I have a 71 dollar potential move for a dollar move to the downside on that trade. Now, that's way better than a stock, because for every stock dollar move down, you lose a dollar, right? But you also gain a dollar in a one dollar move to the upside. So this gives us leverage in the trade, okay? To get paid for the work that we do. Now, when I study charts as hard as I do, I want to get paid for doing that, and so, I look for those options between 70 and 80 deltas because I want to make 70 to 80 percent of that one dollar move in direction. If my direction is right over time, then I get a big percentage move in my options with with the leverage. 
that I'm taking in that tray. Okay, so this is the sweet spot. Ron Ionary's um, talk in, in here was the, the mistake a lot of people make, too many people make, because they're gambling in options, and I think it's even worse today than it was when he was alive, is that people are trying to use directional trades down here. Okay. The first thing they don't recognize that if this trade doesn't move, if the diamonds doesn't move and you're down here, you're holding an asset that has no value except for time. Whatever time is left, that's all you have. There's no asset here except time, and time is eroding against you every single day. Here, you actually have a contract that says, I could buy the stock and change this out, get rid of the, the, the loss in time on this trade and actually have an asset. Now, the 71 delta means there's a 71% chance that this option remains in the money by expiration. In 57 days from now, there's a 71% chance this option will still be in the money at expiration, meaning it still has value. It can lose money, but it's still worth something. You can capture some of your money back, even if you're wrong. Down here, you have nothing. Okay, this, these options, if they don't move enough, they don't come into the money, that option is invalid and will expire worthless at expiration. Now, that doesn't mean when I give this explanation, people say, yeah, but Doug, I can buy these down here. If it moves up, I can make money. And that's true, you can, okay? You can make money on these if your timing, if you're really that good, if your timing is really good and spot on, you can make money with cheap options like this. Okay, well, let's think about it. Why is it when they fall out of the money like this and they go further and further down in Delta, why do they keep getting cheaper? Because this option here only has a 34% chance of even making it into the money to actually be an executable contract that can do anything. You can gamble on these options, but that's all it is. You're not actually trading the stock so much, you're gambling on the option contracts, and it's not a stock replacement trade. It's high risk because every single penny that you pay on this, if you look right here, whatever you pay, on this trade will be at zero at expiration if this is not in the money. 100% of your trade. There's no value here unless it rallies enough to get into the money. So trade your sweet spot here between 70 and 80. And, and I have people argue with me about this all the time. Yeah, but Doug, I, I, I don't want to spend them. I don't want to do that. I want to do what I want to do. And that's, and that's fine, you know, do what you want to do. But I can tell you, since I started doing that, and I hold that as a rule, I make more money. Now, if that's of interest, I mean, you can argue it all you want, but you're gonna make more money if you take higher probability trades. Trades that have a higher probability of being in the money at expiration combined with your technical analysis, you're going to do better here. Okay? And I want every advantage I can get. <clears throat> now, a question always pops up. Okay, if so if 70 and 80, and 80 are good, then why can't I go deeper in the money? And you can. You start giving up a little bit of your leverage in the trade by going um, up in here really deep. You're look how deep this is and you guys notice that we don't have any 100 deltas in here at all market makers are never going to give you an opportunity 
to make a one for one, meaning for every one dollar it goes up using an option contract that you're gonna get the same amount of money in an option contract. They won't let that happen. Because once you start getting up in here, what you're going to notice is they're gonna widen the bid-ask spreads. The bid-ask spreads are gonna get wider and wider and wider, and this will never reach 100. Okay? So you start losing in the bid ask spread and you're giving up so much of your leverage here in that trade by buying in deep, too deep in the money. So there's a reason for both sides of that trade. Now the next thing for the sweet spot on you know, options 101 for me is understanding what gamma is all about. Okay. Gamma is described as the uh, delta of the delta. By the way, if you guys need a class on this in the Right Way Options e-learning session or um, e-learning archive, there's full classes in here um, that I have on all of the Greeks and how to read them, how to understand them. Okay. That's awesome, Jeff. That is awesome. Congrats. Gamma is the speed of the delta. Gamma tells us how fast an option will change in value or how much our delta will change in value based on a $1 move of the stock. So if you look right in here, we've got um, a, a delta here that's bouncing around between 70 and, and, and 71. And it has a gamma of two. By the time this moves up from 390.18 to 391.18, okay, if I buy this option, this option should be, the delta should go up two deltas. So from 70 to 72. So as you're moving up, gamma tells you how fast an option delta will move and improve the leverage of your trade. And there's a whole school of trading out there and you can guys can go study it. I don't I don't do it. I've looked I studied it for a long time. It's just not for me. And that is gamma trading. Trading trades that have huge gamma, which means you have to be essentially exactly right on the timing of the trade. And I know from my history in trading that my timing is never perfect. I I just Maybe I'm just one of the slow ones, but my timing is never perfect in the market. And so I want to avoid high risk gamma. Now, gamma at 57 days off, you can, out, as you can see, it's, it's staying flat in here. But the closer and closer you go to expiration um, in options, gamma gets more, ex more extreme. It's more sensitive to time. So the less, the least amount of time, the more gamma risk that you have in a trade. Now gamma can work for you or, or work against you. You can see in here we have less risk to gamma in the 70 to 80 deltas than we do here. Anything at or just around the money is going to have the highest gamma which means that option that you buy with a short period of time, very close to the money, if you're wrong, and, and it can be just wrong for a little tiny bit of time, your delta position deteriorates so much that you may never have time to recover on that trade. Okay, so gamma has a major sensitivity. The closer to the money and the closer to expiration, gamma grows. It, it becomes quite dangerous. Okay, for, you know, intraday trading, you're going to, you know, probably rely a little bit more on that gamma bump. Let's say I wanted to go long the diamonds today and I'm trading a five minute chart. I'm still going to use the same rules. I'm going to buy something here. Okay, I'm going to probably buy the 70, probably the 78 delta here. Notice it's got a gamma of 14, which means 
that in a one dollar move my gamma can change by 14 points so i better have the direction right because if i don't have the direction right my gamma falls or I mean my delta falls by 14 points i lose a ton of leverage really fast i gotta have my timing just right because without it I get hit really hard on the gamma loss right okay so gamma has more sensitivity the closer it is to the money and the closer it is to expiration okay now people will often ask me so how much gamma should I be trading what's it what's a comfortable gamma and it's really going to depend on the stock. If you if we take a look at a stock that is very, very high implied volatility, gamma is going to be much different. Um, I don't know. Space has got these 200 and 300 percent implied volatilities in here. Well, if you take a look here, the August contracts, there's a seven gamma here on that trade. So implied volatility affects gamma. Implied volatility, this is important to know, only occurs in options. There is no implied volatility on stocks. Okay, Stocks have historical volatility. Options have historical and implied volatility. Implied volatility is a, is a calculation of how people are trading options into the future. Looking ahead. Okay. So implied volatility affects gamma dramatically. Because it will throw those moves in your delta really quick back and forth much more sensitivity when the implied volatility is extremely high. If we take an option with a short period of time, we're going to have that same effect here. And look at that. Wow, that's crazy. They don't even hardly provide much in the short terms there. Um, um, <laughs> look at those deltas. Yikes. Yeah, you don't want to trade any of that. Um, but given given the fact that implied volatility has an impact on this we also want to be paying attention to implied volatility and that look forward on how people are trading the options around around these these trades sets that implied volatility the more implied volatility the higher the gamma is going to be the more implied volatility the higher the theta decay is going to be Okay, so you always want to be paying attention to this Greek as well, and that's that implied volatility and the effect it has on the cost of the option. If you take a look at this option right here, this at the money, or well, it's at the money. Here's a 59 delta. It's actually out of the money. Let's look at the extrinsic value of this option that's in the money. Of $2.35 that we would pay to buy this option, a dollar forty-eight of it is time value. So more than fifty percent of that option price will be at zero in fifty-seven days, meaning we're paying an awful lot for time on this trade. So implied volatility gets into the costing of those pricing of those options. And you can end up paying a tremendous premium for time. And remember, time is the decay portion of the option. It's always working against you if you buy it. Always. It means you have to overcome that big theta potential loss in that trade as you move forward because of the cost of that option. So let's look at the Julys. Also, very very high premium in here on um, on your time decay with only 29 days left 
um, it makes for a very uncomfortable position and you can see the big changes here between the at the money and the options that are in the money much more sensitivity to gamma okay in those trades so always remember that that um, options, these Greeks, have a very big impact on the success and failure of your trading. Okay, you, you need to understand the charting, you need to understand the timing, you need to understand how much you're paying for these options, and you also need to understand how much slippage there is in the trade. Because too much slippage in the trade makes it very, very difficult to make money. Think about it here, if I buy 100 shares of, of of um, uh, space it's gonna cost me one penny okay so a hundred shares and one penny um, per share is what I'm gonna pay in spread if I buy this option here okay look at how much I'm losing in spread I don't know what I could actually negotiate that out to be but implied volatility is having a major impact on that spread. Um, also, extrinsic value will have a major impact on that spread. But keeping in mind that when you have a position like that, you're really giving up your edge. There'd be no reason to trade this option. It is just too costly. It's a terrible deal. You're better off buying the stock. So understanding those dynamics in there is really, really important. Now let's go back to diamonds here for a second. Am I going too fast? Everybody doing okay? Any questions on this? Okay, good. Got an answer from one. Um, thanks, Brad. Okay, let's talk about theta. On the diamonds trade, notice our implied volatility over here on these contracts is only 14.5%. Okay, so low implied volatility overall here in the diamonds. And if we look at the at the money contract here, it's telling us because of 57 days, we're only going to have about 8 cents of theta decay. And it's also telling us if we're up here, it's going to be about 8 cents in theta decay. Okay, so no major impact here on this. So by going out here in this amount of time, I'm really not hurting myself in this trade. Now typically what you're going to see over a period of time, I think it's because the implied volatility is so low, you would typically see this to be like nine or 10 cents and this is going to be eight, seven cents, something like that. There's usually a little bit more variance in that trade. Okay. But what we do know is theta has much more sensitivity to the closer it is at the money and how much time is left on the trade. So if I go from August contracts and I go up here to the July contracts and we look at those, you'll notice in here that we're having more sensitivity here. We're going to be losing more in daily theta decay anything here around the money than we would be if we were up here in the money we're going to be losing more here okay so theta has more sensitivity at the money just like gamma has more sensitivity at the money and the closer we get to expiration, the more sensitivity we have. Okay, Theta becomes much more prevalent. The decay rate becomes much steeper, as we saw in that p graph that I drew out there. It becomes much steeper in that last 30 days. <coughs> so when we take a directional trade, when I take a directional trade, you guys know I trade basically two patterns. I trade something in a trend and I'm looking for a pattern 
that gives me a high probability. Something that is holding support, holding trend, and showing a buy signal. And although I never expect a move in a trade to last two months, I never do expect that move to occur, I'm still planning enough time, 60 days to expiration, for that trade. Because if I time this correctly, I get my expected move out of this trade. Okay, and I suffer very little theta decay, meaning that the implied volatility change that occurs in this rally may completely offset my cost of theta. Right, implied volatility usually expands as the stock moves up. So that implied volatility increase to the time value because I have enough time on the trade allows me to get my expected move out of that trade without suffering a whole lot of theta decay. Sometimes not at all. Because I have plenty of time when this starts to change and I want to close this trade. I can close this trade out and capture back all or almost all of the time value that I paid to put this trade on. But if I put this on with, let's say, 14 days to expiration, that's not going to be true. Because the theta decay is getting so strong, this expected move that finally occurs won't overcome that 14 day to expiration theta decay because it's going to be very, very strong. Okay. So by giving myself more time and looking at that expected move, I get better results. I make more money, like Jeff said. It, it seems counterintuitive. Well, I'm paying more for this option. How can I make more money with it? But you do if your directional assumption is correct because you have that opportunity to sell almost all of that time back to somebody else in the market. Now it's their risk. You got, you got your premium back on that trade and took the goodie out of that trade over that short period of time. Okay. Then if I'm somewhere in that 70 to 80 delta range, okay, of that trade, for every $1 the stock moves, I'm making 70 plus percent of the $1 move. I'm making really good leverage on the amount that I spent on that trade if I have my direction right over the course of that time. I make really good premium or, or really good um, moves in here um, and I, I get the best of both worlds. I get that high percentage return on that leverage and at the same time lose very little in theta on the trade when I go to close that position. I get it. I capture it all back by giving myself that time. Now in a circumstance where my timing is off, and we've seen a lot of charts like this lately, where we have a chart that moves, moves up and it moves up really steeply and then it pulls back a little bit and a, a buy signal pops in there. And I tell people it's perfectly fine to buy that trade as long as you have enough time on the trade. Set your stop loss underneath here and and because it could go early, right? It could take off and continue, maybe setting a steeper upside trend. But if you don't have enough time and this thing has to pull back and rest before it goes, you have too short a time on the trade. You lose too much of theta during that position. Even when it starts to rally, you may not be able to overcome the losses in the theta. Time is too short. Or the time is short enough 
that you had the direction right on the trade. You just didn't give yourself enough time to be right. Okay, how many of you have ever had that problem where overall the direction that you, you were exactly right on the trade? You just didn't give yourself enough time to make money on the trade. So you need to be thinking about that carefully and, and really reviewing your past trades. If that's been a problem for you, then um, it, it's telling you in, in your results that I need to give myself more time, that my my time, my timing on this trade on these trades is not as perfect as I thought it was. So give myself more time to be right. Okay, and with the 60 day minimum trade. Well, I have two, three weeks easy. Then I can let that trade continue to rest without too much worry or concern because theta is not getting too deep into my pocket yet. And if I get that directional move to finally occur, I'm golden. I, I, I make money on the trade. Not as much as if I would have bit, had the timing exactly right, but I still make money on the trade. But if I give myself too short of time on the trade, I don't recover or I stop myself out on this trade prior to the stock making that move to the upside. And I don't know about you guys, but the worst trade for me is not the trade that I pick and it's wrong, okay? Um, I, I mean, don't get me wrong, I hate it when I pick up a buy signal in here and I'm just almost immediately wrong and the stock stops me out. I hate it when that occurs, but that doesn't bother me near as much as the trades that I take and I make the loss happen. I cause the loss, not the market. I took too little time. I didn't give enough time for a trade. I, I hate those worse. Anybody ever take a trade, it reverses on you, you stop out, and then the next day, the next day, that stock is a big winner. Those are the worst. Okay? Those are the worst. And I hate those because I created that loss. That's on me. I created it. Okay, because I didn't give myself enough time in the trade to be able to hold that for a period of time in, in the position. That was my fault. Not market volatility that kicked me out. That was me, all me. I hate that worse than anything. So I know it's hard when I start talking about these things and people say, well, I just want to trade those shorter term options. I want to be quicker in the trade. I want to be right on. But I think most people, if you look at your win-loss ratio, your, your timing is not exact. And, and I know that's true for me. And so if I give myself more time to be right, I have better results in my trading. Okay, um, just as a, um, I'm going to give you um, also example of a trade that starts moving and moving well. Okay, it's not showing a lot of volatility, but moving well, that you can stay with that trade and make significant prob profits because you have more time. I did that with this trade, picking up Rivian in here and running this up. I think the final profit that I took on this was 62% profit because I had enough time to continue to let that run. Give yourself time to be right. Think about those delta positions. That's the options 101, and I'm already over time. You guys have a great afternoon. Thank you so much. For RWO folks, um, Ed's going to take over for me here to close out the day. Thank you so much, Ed, for doing that. I will see everyone next Monday. I'm, I'm, I'm gone tomorrow. Wish you all of the best. Hope you got something out of this today. Have an awesome afternoon. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you on Monday. Take care. Everybody.